where do Wales go from here? The 0 from 4 in this year's Six Nations Championship and staring a wooden spoon in the face. At the very least, they've got to be Italy this coming Saturday. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. Going to be here with you throughout the entire championship. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. But in this one, I'm looking at the Wales team that I expect to face Italy in this crunch match this coming Saturday. Now, I'm recording this Sunday evening, 10th of March. And as far as I know, there's no squad updates uh, that have come out so far. But some Welsh players definitely will be struggling with injury. Ryan Elias pulled out of the France game pre-game with, uh, with a tight hamstring. Joe Roberts hurt his ankle in the early minutes, but played on. I think he completed the whole game in the end. And Tommy Raphael with a bad knee. He came off in the second half, and I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have done without that injury. So we don't know how those are going to settle down. As I said, no squad updates have been announced at this point, so time will tell on that. Now, how did Wales get on against France? Well, they struggled. They got parity at times in the tight, but really the French just wore them down with their power and their urgency and their just directness. Wales caused France some troubles and scored three tries through moving the ball, getting through phases and playing in the right areas. But they just could not keep it going for long enough and eventually succumbed to a super powerful, enormous French team. Alcor and myself went through it in great detail. We'll link that up there so you can go and see what we said. Uh, go take a look at that. Now then, let's get into the selections. and. We will start with the forwards. And as always, these are the guys that I think are guaranteed to keep their spots going into this week. Uh, I think Gareth Thomas, although he had a couple of dicey scrums, is proving to be a really, really good international player. He got himself back into the game after a bad scrum early on. And his, his tackling in particular is really great. Elliot D is just a live wire, really accurate line out throwing, had a good game at the weekend. And Aaron Rain Wainwright was a little bit quieter, but then Wales didn't have as much ball. Excuse me. Uh, but he's still currently Wales's primary ball carrier in the forwards, for sure. Now, Azarati, I think, has gone OK. But I think the scrum's always gone better in the recent weeks when Dylan's come on in the second half. So there's a question mark there. And with Dylan now having a couple of more games in him, the potential that he could start. Seven, Rafael, not sure whether he's fit or not. So there's a question mark there. Four, five, six. I think they all played pretty well. I think Daft Jenkins in particular played well out of those three. So now it's a question of balance. You know, do Wales need all of that size and power against Italy? Or will they be better off going with a, a specialist six and putting Daft Jenkins back in the second row for this game? Also bearing in mind the huge physical toll that these guys would have been through. So a potential... Uh, opportunity to freshen some of these guys up and have people who haven't played all of those minutes against that enormous French team might be beneficial. Here's what I think. I think they will go with Dylan Lewis. Uh, I think he's looked good off the bench. And like I said, with some extra minutes in his legs now, I think he should be good to start. Adam Beard's gone well in the second round. I think they'll pair him again with Jenkins. As I said, I think they don't need the extra size, the extra power. They probably need the mobility more. This is likely to be a wide open, fast game. Italy like to play. So coming in at six, I think it will be his starting debut for Mackenzie Martin, who I think has done really well off the bench both times. Tough on Alex Mann, probably, because he's done well as well. But I just think Martin's shown up. He's added that extra bit of physicality, and I think he deserves a start. So that's what I'll go with. And I think Rafael is a... Tough, tough man, and we'll recover from that knee strain, whatever it was. Okay, onwards to the backs. And 9 and 10 started very well for Wales, although they got subbed relatively early uh, against France, and it seemed a little bit confusing to me. Costello maybe a couple of dodgy kicks, but I thought, you know, as I've spoken about him before, he never loses confidence. He keeps driving forward. He keeps being positive, and I really like that about him. You can't have perfect performances don't exist. What you need, though, is people to just keep with the same mindset. Um, Dyer, I think, has been outstanding this championship. He's possibly been Wales' best back. 
He just looks like a complete live wire, no matter what situation he gets the ball in. I scored a brilliant try yesterday uh, with France all over the place, frankly. Uh, Adams still is a little bit of a question mark for me. He's it just, again, based on what I've seen of him in the past, he's not there at the moment, but he's still a very good player. There's no question about that. And when it has you know, flown onto the scene and been outstanding, again, a couple of errors from him yesterday, sort of brought more pressure on Wales. He's a really young man. It'll be interesting to see how he reacts from that. And I certainly back him to continue wearing the number 15 shirt this coming week and for a long time going forwards as well, I should think. In the centres, I think both the guys that came in, um, Joe Roberts and Owen Watkin, both did did pretty well. They both had nice moments, both showed some class on the ball. Uh, but you wonder whether there was always a plan to bring Tompkins and North back in this coming week. With Joe Roberts possibly not being fully fit with that ankle as well, that may hasten it as well. This is what I think. I think Watkin will keep his place. I think he did very nicely there next to Costello. And I think North will come back in with all his experience to hopefully, uh, as far as Wales are concerned, drive them to a win against Italy and potentially avoid the wooden spoon. They haven't lost all five games for a long, long time in the championship. So they'll be desperate, absolutely desperate to avoid that this coming weekend. Onwards to the bench. And I'm going to back Ryan Elias to recover from that hamstring strain and take his place on the bench along to, alongside Domachowski, who I think has done really, really well this championship as well. Really promising player, strong on the loose head. Again, works hard, good tackler. Azarati moves to the bench and hopefully he can bring on some presence towards the end of this game, along with Rollins in the second row. And then 20 through 23, uh, uh, live-wise, they, you know, if Wales need some energy, if they need some zip, if they need some tactical changes, then these guys can all offer a bit of that. And it may well be necessary against a very strong Italy team coming off a big win against Scotland. Alrighty, what do we want to see from Wales? Ah, uh, geez, I guess, you know, they've got to back their plan and they've got to be confident in what they're doing. And I think all of that is encapsulated in how Sam Costello plays the game. So I'd love them all to just follow him. Really plenty of confidence. If the errors come, which they will, they definitely will at times for sure. We've just got to bounce back into it and get on to the next job. I'd like to see them really play a possession-based game against Italy. I think Italy like to have the ball. And I think if Wales can dominate possession, obviously along with territory would be beneficial, then I think that will be their route to victory. So multi-phase attack, don't need to break the line every time. Just be patient, keep working and try and keep momentum. All right, that's what I think for Wales. Uh, what do you think? Uh, is this the team that can beat Italy? Do you think this is the team that Gatlin's going to pick? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. It helps other people find it and you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next and don't forget to get out and play.